Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zim Bureau. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what's new in Zim 016. Woohoo! So we've just launched 016, and in this bubbling, we'll take you on an overview about where you can find all the new things and talk briefly about each one. Obviously, one of them is shaders. So you can press here to start in, or you can press on the banner up here, uh, like so. And note, uh, speaking of banners, that we've got this uh, the new banner, and you can change the speed of the banner. Whoa, fast! Or even turn it right off. But we'll leave it up here, like a little bit slow. And that speed will, will be uh, with you throughout the Zim site, and remember your setting. Okay, good. Uh, so if we hit the Zim 016 here, um, well, let's also show you where else it is. It's in the About section. So in the About section under Versions, you could find it there. So this is the, the permanent official home of all of our versions. That's where 015 is, 014, etc. Okay, so you can get to it that way. Uh, we've updated as well and the code section here, there it is, 016, like that. So otherwise the template remains the same. And it's in a few other places too. The docs are uploaded to 016, etc., etc., etc. The CDN in the code. All right, so here we go, into 016. It's our little mini site that we have for it. Here's shaders and a bunch of the other things. Why don't we take you through each one just briefly. Shaders allow you, th this effect right here on the icon is a shader itself. And some of them are interactive, some of them are animated. It's a whole language all on its own. So here is a shade. Whoa, look at that. And this comes from Shader Toy and is made by this fellow. So all of these shaders, pretty well, all of them come from Shader Toy made by somebody. So you can take a look there. And to drop this down, boop, and F11 this back up. Okay, so those are exciting new shaders you can explore, and we'll talk about what shaders are and show you some code and stuff like that in a bubbling on its own. Here's the next one, and it is an emitter configurator. So you can adjust these sliders to configure the emitter or use things like here. We've just turned the trace on. Uh, here we can choose different colors. There's a bunch of white ones and different shapes, etc. You can poke around here and, and move it. But anyway, we'll uh, and, and then end up seeing the code for that. So there's the code that you can copy. And that's the a new emitter tool. So we'll explore that in, um, in an, another bubbling. And uh, then back to wherever we were out here uh, is the uh, thing called, um, let's see, we've got a ratio here and a normalize. So in the past, when we animated, we animated from the top left and went or we animated it in sequence reverse and we went backwards. But what if we want to animate from the middle out? And that's what we're doing here. We're animating from the middle out. Isn't it cool? And so there's now a way that we can do that or from anywhere. You could animate from the middle side or something like that. So we'll see how to do that with normalize and ratio. Here is uh, speech analysis or, well, maybe not analysis. Um, we can recognize speech. So Listening. We are now talking and it is saying what we are talking about. And if I talk again, it will say something else. And here is a final one, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, and there's also uh, this one, which allows us to... Hello world. Say hello world or whatever things in various uh, languages there. Okay, so that's very exciting. And thanks, Carl, for uh, doing some exploration there in the beginning. We brought that into Zim. It's a wrapper on the uh, speech um, API in JavaScript. Here's Threshold. And this is a tool that we've made with a new Threshold effect. And that allows us to replace colors that aren't bigger than other colors. So that's what the picture looked like initially. 
and we can adjust uh, the effects on that. Also upload our own pictures and save them. So I've been making Instagram posts with this. As a matter of fact, the, the Dr. Abstract uh, site that's coming up, we've got a new Dr. Abstract site coming up, makes use of this uh, visually uh, from, from this tool. And label words, much like label letters. If you remember label letters, label letters worked out really well where we can animate individual letters. Uh, then we had requests to animate certain words and that makes sense as well. So there you go. Well, it's not only for animating these, it cuts up the uh, your paragraph or whatever, all your text into words that you can then control individually. Sound on. And note that it fades in, fades out. Fades in, fades out. So we've added a fade command or method for the, the audio uh, result and also a panning one. So we'll check that out later. Here is the indicator and we can now use any display object for our indicator. Indeed, here we're using a label. It might be better if you load in pictures, but now uh, in the past we had used little dots, little stars, little whatever, and now, uh, and even emojis, but now it can accept any display object. Thanks, Carl, for the request on that one. And then, Pettis, uh, you had mentioned that we should bring in object controls for 3JS, and that's a good idea. So now we've done that where uh, the object controls can control individual objects like that, whereas before in the orbit controls, it orbits around the whole, uh, the whole scene. So if you had one object there, it almost looks the same. So with one object, it almost looks the same, but uh, if you had two objects there, it would orbit around both those objects. You couldn't do them individually. So uh, that's there. Thank you for that. And then here is a percent arc. So we already have percent on a circle. This circle has been rotated minus 120. So when you make percent, it would draw a line, it like cuts off the circle, but it's a straight line. Now we've added an arc, and if we're minus 30, it heads the arc back this way, and we can make a moon. Isn't that cool? And if we're plus, then we would, it would move it more off to the right. So that gives us some more things that we can do uh, with the circle there. Nice, huh? We short-formed Google Fonts, so now you can preload Google Fonts by saying GF underscore Roboto, GF underscore Anton, and then bring in your fonts that way. If it does have a space in it, you can either put the plus in there or leave it. GF dancing space script would work. Um, okay, so that's uh, Google Fonts, handy thing. And then our last feature here is the slider with a range. So check that out. You can drag that or drag the individual ones here. This is the min and the max on the left. So if we go to a min of two and we go to a max of seven, then we get an average of four and a half. That would be whatever is in the middle there. And the amount is five. That's the difference between them. Isn't that cool? So uh, we can also wiggle these things. So I'm wiggling the min and the max there. And in this case, I'm just wiggling, I can't remember what we call the center point of that thing. I don't know if it's the average, but I'm, I'm wiggling that and keeping the range the same. Wow, nice. So that's been a little while. So we, we wanted uh, to have a range. Now we have it. It's, it's right on the slider is a few extra parameters there. Yay! So those are the main features that we've uh, singled out, but there's also other updates and we'll go to the, the docs here and choose updates like so. And now we've added Zim016 here. There's the updates for 015. We scroll on down here. Here's the information for shaders. Of course, it would be all in the docs, but we brought out some, some things to feature and give you an idea. And we'll take a look at a bubbling about shaders in the future. There's the emitter configurator, normalize and ratio. That might sound a little bit tricky. I kind of don't know what I'm talking about maybe, but it, it's sort of neat. Here, what we've done is we found out the distance of each of the children in the container. This is a tile and we found out the distance from the center in this case and then we give each child a ratio and whichever uh, if it's if the ratio is higher if it's closer to the center we've scaled it bigger and if it's smaller it gets smaller 
So that allows us to do things like that and also animate based on that ratio. So we'll come back and do a bubbling on that. Here's the range. Uh, the wiggle. Uh, this one is not in the features, so I should mention it to I'll try and mention some of the bigger ones here that aren't in the features right here in this bubbling. So wiggle default base amount and end on start. Okay, so first of all, it used to be a pain in the neck when you specify the starting place of a circle, it's X, because we often will chain on wiggle right onto the end of circle, but if we haven't made the circle, we don't know its X position yet. So we, that means we'd have to drop out of chaining. Well, now we assume, if you put in null there, we assume you just want to start wherever the circle is, so or whatever the circle's X property is, that's where we'll start. Same with rotation, for instance. So just start with whatever the rotation is. Um, here's your mins and maxes. The other thing is, is if you provide a time, like the, which parameter is that called? Total time. So if you have a total time, it would stop wiggling and just leave it wherever it was, wherever it happened to be. Now we automatically will wiggle it back to where it started. So that's now the default um, way that it goes. Before we couldn't, there, there was no other choice. You'd have to animate it again afterwards to animate it back to the start. <laughs> And thanks, Amy, for pointing that out. Um, this does definitely make it easier. There's also an end on start parameter that defaults to true, but you can set it to false, and then it will be like it was before, where when it stops wiggling, it will be wherever it was. So who knows? You, know, you might be wanting to wiggle something and then have it wiggle over here and just stay there. Uh, or you might want to always have it wiggle back to its start, and that's probably usually what you want there. So that's um, some updates and improvement to wiggle. Um, we're launching a new forum. We've already got it going on in the back, uh, but we're waiting on some final guidance with respect to how it handles email. So we're not, we haven't quite launched that yet, but we're close. And by the way, that will, that there are the reasons for it. The forum content uh, will show in web searches and the messages will persist and not be removed after three months as, as they do in Slack. So we're phasing out our Slack. Uh, over the next month or two, and we're going to this new forum. Uh, we'll keep Discord as it is, and so there you go. Label words, there's the label word stuff. Here's object control, fading out the sound. There's also pan in there, so there's the fade. Uh, pan, by the way, is a property, so we had to call that, unfortunately, we had to call it pan sound. And we could have been consistent, called it fade sound, but we hardly ever pan, and most of the time we fade, so I think we'll just call it fade there. Here's speech, and uh, we'll do a bubbling on that, so we won't talk about that right now. But permission ask, we can mention. We it used to be called sensors ask, sensors ask, and it would handle the device orientation and device motion. But then the same thing comes up with mic and camera. So when you try and access the microphone and the camera on iOS, you have to interact first before you do that. So we rolled that into the same tool called Permission Ask. So now it's called Permission Ask. And there it is. It still handles, it'll handle all four of those things now. And that's on mobile uh, iOS. There's the Google shortcuts. Oh, look at that, GF Roboto, nice. And here is another one that's not in the bubblings specifically, and uh, that is, or not the features of a future one, so I'll mention it right now. You see, this is a tile right here that we've got. These are the objects in the tile. And we've turned on a background color. So the background color is this darker blue on the, it's not, it's not that thing, but the darker blue there. And we've added a padding. So you see how the there's a padding uh, above and beside all of these, along with the padding H and padding V if you wanted background paddings, if you wanted to um, override the general background padding. And that uh, that's nice, okay? So, and remember there's also a backdrop. So theoretically this lighter blue could have been a backdrop and it already had a padding. Backdrop had a padding but each individual uh, cell didn't have a padding. And so now we're uh, pretty well the same as what a, a table in HTML was in terms of um, background colors and paddings and stuff like that. Um, 
but we're still more flexible than the HTML table where we can squeeze squeeze things. So you don't have to be in columns necessarily. You can squeeze squeeze things and do cross columns, cross rows, etc. So there you go. And remember, uh, that's if you want a table. If you want to wrap stuff, then use a Zim wrapper. Here's the Zim circle percent stuff and percent arc. Uh, this percent's been around, but the percent arc is new. And indicator display object, where we're adding the indicator type is any anything that could be a new pick, could be your own um, rectangle or whatever you want. Uh, style group only. Okay, so this is not a main feature, so we'll describe it here. Uh, by the way, so what we're looking through now are uh, I don't know if call them sub features. They are main features, but we didn't we didn't bring them out as main features on the Zim 016 site, but they are still, they have their heading. Whereas in general, we got a whole bunch of features in general that don't even have their own heading. So I'm taking you through all of the all of the headings. We want to make sure that we cover all those. So style group only. Uh, it's kind of cool where you have a style of a color of red. That means this circle that gets made after should be red, but we've told it, nope, don't style. However, uh, wonder comes on through. So if you have groups, we will honor the groups, even though we said style false. If you don't want style false, you don't want your groups to be styled, don't put your groups there. So we're figuring, hey, it might give some extra functionality if, if we turn off all the styles that might come to it, but only honor the groups. So this will have a circle with a percent of 50, but it won't be red. So uh, that was a little adjustment to style. Then we've got these general ones. And I don't think we need to read through each of the general ones. We'll leave that up to you to come, come and check out. Just watch the breaks. You see how some of those have breaks in them? That might mean a parameter order. Uh, for instance, in this Zim text input, no longer dispatches an input event if the text property is changed programmatically. I don't think we spelled programmatically right. <laughs> uh, I think we better make a change, an update to the uh, spelling there. Or maybe we did. I don't know. I don't say it all that much or write it that much. Anyway, that's kind of an important principle. Any components, have the, they have these events, and the events are supposed to capture what the user is doing. Are you clicking it? Are you changing it? So if the user changes it, you get a change event. But if you programmatically say, hey, my slider should be at a value of um, a current value of 20, then we're not going to trigger a change event because that's for the users coming in. So we throughout, we try and keep that consistent. Uh, the reason why is if you've just programmatically set it to 20, go ahead and do whatever you want there. You don't have to put in an event. And sometimes that causes you want the user's event does something and if you program event you want it to also do something well you got to handle that yourself just break the event out into its own function call it from the uh the change event but also when you manually change it or when you programmatically change it then call the function at that point after you've programmatically changed that'll be up to you to call the same function from two different places all right and that avoids uh this sort of eternal loop like if you if you changed it and tell the tell the slider to change that might call a change event but then it changes it again and then it calls the slider, you know etc cetera, etc cetera. So that could go on forever so with the text input we hadn't honored that initially and now we've backed out of that and so that's why the break is there so that's why why you're looking for things like that for the breaks note that we have the breaks and if we go up to the top it's easy to find the breaks you hit Come here, it breaks. And that takes us down right to the breaks. So that's the, the compilation of the breaks that are inside here. Um, you have other things too, improvements and improvements. <laughs> that's kind of, improvements, half of them are new things that will help you, uh, but half of them are actually, we've just improved it because we fixed a bug. <laughs> So should we call it an improvement? Yeah, it had a bug. So if you're using an older version of Zim, that bug might be in there. Maybe you didn't even notice it. So just have a look at improvements. It may be that you want to update your code if some improvement will help you. Okay, um, so there you go. And what was this one? 
Oh, rounded rectangle to blob. How about that? Uh, maybe could have brought that out on its own. But thanks, Amy, for pointing that out. Uh, we never had, uh, or the blob has shapes that you can add to it. So for the points, you can give it um, points. Or you could give it a number of points. Or you can pass in a, a circle. Well, you can actually say the word circle. You can say the word rectangle. But if you pass in a Zim circle or a Zim rectangle or a Zim triangle, it will make a blob based on those those sizes of those. But it didn't it didn't have the rounded corners. At the moment, we didn't do rounded corners for a triangle. Triangle, we added rounded corners at some point. It's a little odd that you would need that, but um, kind of make a yield sign. Imagine that. But anyway, uh, the yield sign, they didn't want to put this triangular sign out there in the wild with these points on it. You know, yield, watch out for the sign. So they really rounded the corners of the yield signs. Anyway, uh, the rounded corners though on a rectangle do work here in a blob now. So you can pass in a, a Zim rectangle with rounded corners, even oddly rounded corners, like the top one doesn't have one, but the other one's round, or even uneven rounded corners. And if you pass that in, then we'll make a blob that has those rounded corners. All right, and that's what that's about. Boop. Great. So coming down here, uh, just a, a note on patches. We've already patched this one <laughs> right, right for this presentation. Uh, I was doing the presentation. I couldn't go forward and backwards with alt arrows when I was on a full Zim page. It didn't, it didn't work with the alt left arrow. And then I realized, oh, that's because we turn off that kind of stuff so that you don't jostle the canvas by accident. Arrows will move a canvas up and down usually, or page up, page downs, move them. And we don't want that to happen. So we turned off those things. But realized we probably should have left the browser control like the alt arrow left, alt arrow right. There might be an alt tab thing too that we wanted to... You know, take a look in that. You might see another patch with an alt tab if that's being affected. Um, but now they work. Okay, so we, we just went in. We did a patch, but we had already launched the latest version of Sim. And so this is an update. And that's how patches go. If we go to the top and choose Zim015, there are the patches for Zim015. And I'm going to jump down to it. So these are all the things that updated after Zim015 was launched. And that's a fair bit of them. We tend to try and make sure that it won't break the code, obviously. Some of these things might be new-ish, um, but very rarely will we patch something like change parameters uh, order. You know, we, we kind of say, oh, no, no, no hang on, that, that would break people's code already out there. We can't do that. So we would say breaking code for the next version. But the patches uh, we try and get away with, uh, as you can see, really all this stuff could be considered also in Zim 016. <laughs> okay, I, I think that's enough for this introduction. Do you like it? Yeah, you happy? Oh, one more thing. Um, down by the breaks or by the patches. Just want to show you what we've updated so far. The docs, the updates, the CDN, the code page template, the editor has now been changed to uh, 016. I have to do, or we have to do sl uh, Slate. That's the editor in Zim Kids. We'll update that shortly. Uh, we also have, as it says down here, uh, does it? Oh, we're missing that message. Thought it was there. But we do have some other changes that we're planning for the editor. Some, uh, not really changes too much, more improvements, uh, at, at certain parts of it there. So we'll get to that eventually. There's a half dozen little things that we want to update with the editor. Also, we don't have the newer examples are not in the editor either. And we'll probably be rolling those newer examples that we've been doing into the editor uh, shortly. But currently, the editor is at Zim016. We've updated the examples, so that's nice. Check in the examples and you'll see some of them there. I should show you that. The, the site banner, the site features, right. A couple of these features we added into the art. So gen art, the shader stuff is good for making art. And we the components have the range, the range slider. So we added that into components. The about page has been updated, as you saw. The dev site is updated with the new features of Zim016. Distill is updated. The banner sections, uh, I guess that's site features. I think that's the same duplicated that. 
Looks like we've done extra work. The map, the ES6 module and script pages, and Zim Shim for Animate have, has been updated. We also, as we were updating Zim Shim for Animate, found a, a couple things that were a little bit older that weren't quite working properly, so we've updated those as well. We have to update Slate, as mentioned, to Zim016. That's the Zim Kids editor. Uh, we're doing the bubbling videos now, and then afterwards we'll move to uh, update GitHub, Node Package Manager, and TypeScript. That's all now kind of one thing all worked out with the Node Package Manager in VS Code for us. So that's become easier to do. We've um, had simplified that with the say, help of um, Yon. That was uh, Yon. That was really nice of you to help out there. I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're hope you're doing well. Uh, but anyway, that's all one package, and or it's not exactly one package, but we are able to command line that pretty easily now. So we'll probably keep that more up to date. We had been waiting about a month before t just to see if how it all shakes out, like get all the, the bugs out of the new version, etc. And then because it was a bit of a chore, we would then update uh, GitHub and well, more so the node package manager stuff. And TypeScript, but we'll see if we can keep these up to date a bit faster. Like within a couple of days, we should get that updated, and then we should put the launch on Patreon as well. Uh, speaking of Patreon, if all of this helps you, uh, this has been like at least two months' worth of work for us, and we're really proud of it, as you'll see as we go through these bubblings. But uh, if you can help us get Zim to the people. That's what we're trying to do. And any Patreon support goes goes directly towards that, whether that be for ads, for paying for server stuff, like our, our Discord stuff coming up, etc. That's always helpful. Yeah, time is nice as well to, to be rewarded. But if you are a student or short on cash or anything like that, no worries at all. We're just very happy that you're here with Zim, um, what you can do to help support is to share things on social media if you can. <laughs> I don't know if we got totally the most social media uh, folks working here in Zim. It's hard, hard to say. Uh, but anyway, any help you can telling others about Zim would be great. And thank you very much. One last thing then I wanted to show you was our examples update. So go up to the top here, hit examples, bing. And we have some of the shaders and normalize. Some of those examples are in there. We didn't want to bury the texture actives too much because those are darned important. This is this is uh, earth shattering stuff right here. The texture actives are fantastic, and we plan on doing a lot more work with those too. So anyway, there they are. Uh, but we've added a few updates from our our current thing, and also under collections, thing. Collections, there's the Zim 016 ones. Here's a collection of shaders. That makes sense as a collection. Uh, there's the texture active ones. So that's what we didn't want to bury. Here are the Zim 015s. Okay, you get the idea. So we've added uh, a couple extras in there in the collections. And then with that, we'll hit the top here and go back to the main Zim site, which you can get to by hitting the Z. And uh, that's the end of the bubbling. It's been great to have you here. I'm Dr. Abstract. Um, please give a share if you can of anything on social media and keep on building in Zim. Come into our forums at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. And pretty soon I'll have to stop saying that because we've got a new forum on the way. Ooh, exciting. Ciao.